Welcome to the Nightclub guys, it's your host, the Night Wrencher. Today we're going to be learning how to weld thin metal, specifically how to weld old exhaust. Now, exhaust itself doesn't necessarily count as a thin metal. Usually this stuff is 16 gauge or maybe even 18 gauge, but usually 16 gauge. So it's fairly thick material, but the thing is, old exhaust actually goes through a lot of heat cycles and it weakens the metal, so it actually becomes really difficult to weld. Uh, very similar to welding a thinner gauge sheet metal and because a lot of you guys like to DIY your exhaust I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I do to actually get this thing started as you guys can tell I'm building a T6 divided uh, flange for a turbo and I'm actually using old exhaust just like this one after it's all after I'm all done welding I'm gonna go ahead and sand this down maybe even sandblast it get all the finish off and then powder coat it or do something so I can get it looking nice I'm just doing this essentially to show you guys that old exhaust isn't necessarily trash you can definitely reuse it for a lot of different things now before we actually start welding there are a few things I do want to go over first essentially some guidelines that you guys should really follow when you're welding stuff like this so there are several big points when welding thin metal the first is when you are welding thin metal the surface becomes extremely extremely important what I mean by that is when you are welding something and you're welding two similar metals together, people always say clean your metal before you start welding. That becomes extra crucial when you're welding older or thinner metal because every uh, arc that you light on the steel will matter. Every point of contact will matter. It'll make a difference. And if you are struggling to get the spark lit, you're going to start poking holes. You're going to start damaging the, the edge of the, of the material. And once you start damaging the edge, and you can't hold it together, you're just gonna be struggling and be dumping more and more and more and more metal into the pipes. So you're gonna run into a lot of problems. The second thing you guys need to know is that you gotta get rid of all the gaps. As you guys know, thin metal blows through, like I said, real easy. And when you have metal that looks like this and you've got, typically this is a 16th of an inch gap, which is, it wouldn't be a very difficult thing to fill if you were just welding it straight across on a thicker piece of metal. But because it's thin metal, by the time you try to bridge both of these, you've already spent too much heat and you soaked it into the metal. Now, as soon as you start trying to bridge it, everything's just going to drop inside. So you actually need to support the two pieces of metal one next to the other. So you actually want to close these gaps to essentially nothing. And that'll prevent the metal from getting too molten and falling right into the pit. And that'll keep you a little bit better. So sometimes you guys can turn it a little bit and actually find the sweet spot to actually close in this gap and if you guys can find that you guys can go ahead and get a better finish on that weld typically when you're about to weld two pieces of metal the professionals always say bevel the metal before you start welding so you can get good penetration well uh, trust me when i say that when you're welding thin metal you, the penetration will come whether you bevel the edge or not you should not be beveling the edge on thin metal because that just gives you a thinner metal a thinner work surface to work off of and what you actually want to do you just want to get this the two edges as pristine and clean as you can so if you get any kind of air bubbles or contamination bubbles it's going to create a void and you're going to have to try to go back and fill it and if you can't get all the contaminants out you're just going to keep filling and filling and filling and the holes are going to keep dropping into the pipe itself the last thing i need you guys to really understand is that you really need to see what you're doing if that means cleaning out your helmet if that means adding more lights you need to see exactly what you're doing because you have to be very deliberate especially on very thin materials you have to be very deliberate on what you guys are pointing to and how long you're holding the trigger and where you're moving the trigger after it's been pulled so if you guys are looking at this little bead here it's not the most beautiful bead but it's not going to be the first thing you actually want to do when you start welding this stuff is actually tack everything together get it solid get it fitted get it nice tack it together put some solid tacks basically you're going to want to start at one of the materials and then drag it across the void into the other material and then let it go it shouldn't take you more than a second to actually get the tacks going because that's going to be the basis for the entire rest of your weld the more tacks you start off with the easier it is going to be to weld so make sure you get that done first so as you guys can see in the film i basically start the tack and then drag it into the void and then i start it back on top of the weld and drag it into the void and then i start on top of the weld and drag it into the void you really don't want to start in the void and then try to build it up because it's just going to fall in 
So your original tack, that the first few tacks that you actually use to hold your material together, you're going to start your weld off of those and then pull it into the void. And you're going to keep doing that over and over and over again until you finally get all the way across. Once you actually finish getting all the way across and all the way around whatever you're trying to weld, you can actually weld directly on top of that again in order to get a stronger, fatter weld or if you just want something that looks a little bit nicer. Now your material is all one piece and you could actually weld right over it and make it look really nice. As for the machine settings, I essentially just turn it all the way down to make sure I have no chance of overheating the metal too early. If I need to introduce more heat or more material into the metal itself, then I'm just going to lay a little bit longer on the weld and just make sure I actually spend more time with the gun than trying to fix everything with settings. A lot of people think that just because you're welding on lower settings means you're not going to have enough penetration and you're not going to have the metal stick to each other. But that's far from the truth. As long as you can get the two materials bonded, you could actually run another bead right on top using higher machine settings and be able to actually get the strength that you need. But you can't really do that all at once because you're going to just be blowing holes right through the metal. You got to solidify and strengthen the metal first bond one piece to the other piece and make sure everything's okay and then you can go through and actually add strength by adding more material into the metal well in your own exhaust can seem pretty daunting but if you guys take enough time effort and patience into your welds you guys should be able to get a really good result you guys should be able to make all the repairs and all of the modifications that you actually need and be able to do that on your own and have a somewhat decent result even with the cheapest of tools so that's about it i'll see you guys all in the next one Night Wrencher out.